I feel like I just decluttered my collection, but we're decluttering again. Welcome back everyone. Today's video is going to kick off a series of my makeup collection and also some declutters. Now I did some decluttering not that long ago, but 2023 was really my year of cutting down my makeup collection, cutting down what I was buying, cutting down how much PR I was keeping, and I always do declutter videos at the end of the year, so I still wanted to keep up with that. I also wanted to come and show my entire makeup collection to get an updated inventory. It was in spring, I believe. I decided that I also, in the hopes of helping me keep my makeup collection somewhat minimal, was to do an inventory of my entire makeup collection and then count throughout the year how much I had, like how many foundations, how many lipsticks, and then also give myself a goal within those uh, categories that I have. So today is going to be a part one. We are going to be doing primers, foundations, concealers, and also my powders. So I'm gonna show my full collection. I am going to do a little bit of decluttering, and then I am going to do a wrap up make makeup inventory video after we get through all of the different categories. So I believe we're gonna have four videos in this series as we get through my entire makeup collection. I'm really curious to see where I will be from my goals that I first set for my makeup inventory video to where we are at the end of the year, but let's go ahead and get started. All right, so starting off with primers, foundations, concealers, powders. I've become kind of like the queen of giving away makeup, even if I am like using products. I'm like, oh here, like I don't really need this. So I feel like I didn't really have that many primers anyways, but then I've been giving them to people that I think will get more use out of them. Cause honestly, I don't really use primers all that often. It's very, very rare if I do. Maybe if I'm going out, I don't know, I wanna say like special occasions or like out for a long time, but usually my skin is pretty fine without a primer. I do have more dry skin, also more sensitive skin. Typically I'm more acne prone, but it's been pretty under control as of late. So I now just have two uh, primers in my collection. So I have from Lawless Beauty the Set the Stage Hydrating Serum, Serum Primer, and then my mattifying one is from Milk Makeup. This is their like Pore Eclipse mattifying primer. So definitely my favorite and my most used is going to be this one from Lawless Beauty. So it feels a little bit more like skincare. It's a really lightweight serum and it just makes my skin feel super soft and very hydrated. So typically if I'm reaching for a primer, especially because I have dry skin, it's usually going to be this one from Lawless. I've been using it for a long time time and I recommend it really consistently but if I do feel like for whatever reason I need something a little bit more mattifying I can go into this one from Milk Makeup so I I feel like I would be fine if I just had the Lawless but you know it's that thing of like oh, I think that I need options and all of that I've kept this one from Milk Makeup I got it to review so I kind of just kept it around for that it's it's not my absolute favorite but I also feel like my skin type doesn't really need it uh, so I'm gonna keep the two primers that I have. All right, and then I have five powders here. So I have three pressed powders and two loose powders. For my loose powders, I have the Nakia Joy Cosmetics and then also the one from Laura Mercier. Honestly, I think that these are both really nice powders. I just, right now, I'm really just reaching for my pressed powders the most. It's pretty rare that I'm doing a loose powder. Again, especially I feel like because I have more dry skin, I just don't really have a lot of issues with my makeup moving around a lot. Uh, so I feel like I can probably get rid of one of these. I think more recently I've been reaching into the Laura Mercier. Again though, I think that these are both great products. Uh, the Laura Mercier I just feel like is maybe a little bit like a l like the tiniest bit more lightweight tiniest bit more lightweight so and it's a little bit bigger I think I'm going to keep this one from Laura Mercier and then declutter the Nakia Joy I've gotten a lot of use out of this powder honestly I don't even know like I could probably pass it on to like a friend if they need a loose powder but uh, I've gotten a lot of use out of this one and it is a great powder it's just one of those where I just don't think that I need to keep a ton of things in my collection I remember like my declutters last year and people were saying like but you love this product and like I bought this product because you love it and now like you're decluttering it. I don't need a gigantic makeup collection. I just don't. And there's products that you can still really like, still really enjoy. 
uh, and still be able to recommend without having to keep all of them. Like I no longer want 50 foundations in my collection. I no longer want 200 eyeshadow palettes in my collection. It doesn't mean that I don't think something is good anymore or that I wouldn't still recommend it. It's just what do you actually need to keep around and how much of that space are you letting be consumed by something that you don't use regularly? I think that's something that I really started to look in at um, over the last couple of years, you know, especially with my move and I downsized um, from a house to an apartment and it just really felt like so much of my space was being taken up by makeup, which makes sense because this is my job, but at the same time, it really wasn't bringing me that type of joy that it once did and it was honestly causing more stress than anything. I felt like I couldn't keep anything clean. My place was constantly cluttered. You know, people would come over and be like, oh, okay. Like clearing off makeup off the couch so I could sit down. I was like, okay, we gotta make a change. So just wanted to point that out. And then I have these three pressed powders. Like I said, I'm just more into pressed powders right now and I will be keeping all of these. My Charlotte Tilbury, she's, Ooh, she looking a little rough. This is the Flawless Finish Airbrush Powder, and this is my favorite powder. I mean, obviously, you can tell I've gone through a couple of these throughout the years. I continue to repurchase them. I use the shade 2, and I think that it's fantastic. I did recently purchase the one from Huda Beauty, so I've been kind of trying to give the Charlotte Tilbury a little bit of a break since she's almost gone, but I got this one from Huda, the Easy Bake and Snatch Powder, and I got mine in the shade Pound Cake, and this is what I've been using so much. You see this in pretty much all of my Get Ready With Me videos. I like it because it's very like smoothing on the under eyes, and it's a little bit brightening as well um, without being like overly glowy or anything like that, so I particularly love this for my under eyes. I can use it for the face as well but really enjoyed that one. And then my favorite powder right now is this one from Lawless Beauty, and I use the shade Light Medium, so I just repurchased this during the last Sephora sale as well because I went through an entire one of these. I think this is such a great powder. It dethroned my Dior Powder No Powder, and it is my most used powder for my face. This one I feel is a little bit heavier than like the Huda Beauty and definitely the Charlotte, so this is what I prefer to use all over my face, but it's gorgeous. Again, you see me use it in all of my Get Ready With Me videos and I think it's fabulous. All right, so moving over to foundations. So I have 11 foundations, not too bad. And oh, I think this, I think I'm about to declutter even more. My last declutter for foundations was pretty brutal. I think we're about to declutter even more. So first of all, I didn't even really know what this was when I was going through my drawers. I was like, what is this? Like I see it when I open it, but what actually is this? I believe this is from M Cosmetics and I meant to double check myself. So let me just do that now. This is the Daydream Cushion Foundation. Okay. Confirmed, this was from M Cosmetics. I remember buying this in like, I think a lip liner and maybe one other product from M Cosmetics, a highlighter maybe, or a blush, a blush, a blush. It was the cream blush stick that I bought. And I think I used this like a few times and then pretty much forgot about it. I think the packaging kind of like fell apart. So then I just had this going on and I think that it just kind of got tucked into a drawer and I forgot about it. But I used to really like cushion foundations. I remember there was a certain point in like 2016 YouTube where I don't remember if it was like L'Oreal or someone like that had the cushion foundation and it was like all the rage and there were so many videos about it. And I mean, this one just was something that I didn't even remember I had in my collection. So... I will be decluttering that one. Uh, one that I really enjoy and still wear a lot, this is from Urban Decay, the Stay Naked Tinted Hydromaniac. This is 41 light medium. Honestly, I'm getting pretty down there uh, with how much product I have left in here, but this is one of my favorites. I recommend this to a lot of people, and I always say when I talk about this one that I have people with dry skin, combo skin, oily skin, sensitive skin. Everyone seems to like this one. Of course, it's not everyone, but the majority of people that I talk to online and offline seem to enjoy this foundation, so I will be keeping that one. Okay, I'm looking at my Pat McGrath and my Estee Lauder, and I'm feeling like I only need to keep one. Who's mad that the Estee Lauder is dirty? I'm just curious, because sometimes I get comments and like that. It's like, it's my makeup, like I use it, like what? Um, so Estee Lauder Double Wear, fan favorite, holy grail for a lot of people. The Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Estee Lauder. I wear the shade 3N1. Uh, Pat McGrath is shade 10. I like both of these. I've liked both of these for a long time. But I don't need to keep them both. <laughs> Woo, which one are we going to do? So I, for the majority of 2023, was wearing 
concealer and powder. Sometimes just like concealer and a light setting powder like the Charlotte Tilbury. Sometimes it was concealer and a heavier powder like the Lawless Beauty. Uh, but I, I really kind of strayed away from my liquid foundations, which is why I feel like I don't need to keep both of these. I will say that these are really similar though. They're both a like medium coverage, I would say. They give a very natural finish to the skin. They're both very long wearing. I think the Estee Lauder is just slightly more long wearing. The Pat McGrath, I think, is like slightly more of a natural finish to the skin. These really are both beautiful. I think I'm actually going to keep the Estee Lauder though. One of the reasons I want to keep the Estee Lauder is I do feel like this is such a good shade match for me. And it's kind of one of those that I feel like no matter when I put it on, whether I'm more tan, whether I'm more pale like I am right now, I still feel like somehow the Estee Lauder shade matches me really well. Woo! It's a little bit hard for me to give up the Pat McGrath, but I, I honestly could not tell you the last time that I wear it. I tend to, like, if I'm doing something, um, again, I, I kind of say that, like, special occasion or things like that, I tend to go for the Estee Lauder. So that's why I'm going to keep that one. All right, so I have two drugstore ones here, and I feel like I can also declutter one of these. So we have from Wet n Wild, their Tinted Hydrator, and from Milani, their Hydrating Skin Tint. Milani is in shade... To 10 the wet and wild is in shade light medium I've gotten great use out of both of these I mean you can probably tell from the Milani it's really not even worth it for me to pass this over to somebody I've had it for a couple of years now I've used a lot of this product it is a really good one honestly I can probably just throw this one away like we got a got we got a lot of good times together um, for the Wet n Wild, this one is about empty as well. Like it is pretty light in here, but this one is so beautiful. To compare the two of them, um, you know, they're both kind of um, touted as skin tints. And for me, the Wet n Wild is just like such a your skin, but better. It just kind of instantly doesn't look like you have too much makeup on. It just kind of, I don't know, like smooths the skin out. It just makes your skin look nicer. I mean, again, your skin, but better. That's how I would describe the Wet n Wild. It's a very natural finish. It's more of a lighter coverage. Um, and then kind of similar with the Milani, I will say the shade match wasn't the best for me in the 210. It was just like slight, like slightly, slightly off. Like I almost want to say like slightly more of like an orange tint maybe. It was still such a beautiful finish and a little bit more glowy, which I did like with having dry skin. Uh, I know my friend Ashley, this is one of her favorites as well and she uses this one all of the time. Um, I don't think that she would be a good shade match for this one, but I am going to declutter the Milani and keep the Wet n Wild and I'm hoping to be able to finish this off. Now that I've gone back to foundations, maybe I can finish off that one from Wet n Wild. Uh, a big reason why I went back to my foundations was because of the Fenty foundation stick. I bought this one recently. I went to Austin at the beginning of November and I bought this while I was there and it was during the Sephora sale so I was able to get the 20% off. I got the shade 7. I wasn't considering this because I don't do stick foundations a lot. Like I have in the past, there's been some that I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. But I'm just not a big stick foundation girl. I really am more of just like straight liquid foundation. But a lot of people are saying that they like this and I was with my friend Angie and she loves this one So I was like, let me just give it a try I had gotten shade matched at a YouTube event that I went to in LA So I already kind of had an idea that it was going to be really blendable and that's what Angie would say too This is the only foundation I have worn since the beginning of November I have not put another one on my face. This is beautiful. I use this in all of my get ready with me videos. It truly is so blendable. Shade match uh, for like seven is so beautiful for me, but this is one of those you truly could just blend it in with your fingers and it's going to be so beautiful. It's very natural on the skin. It's very lightweight. Um, this is just fantastic. It's great for like a travel makeup bag. I have a bunch of travel coming up in 2024, including Ireland at the end of December. And this is just such a great one to be able to throw in my bag. So definitely love that one. All right, so I have this one here from Undefined Beauty. This is their R&R Sun Serum. This is a really nice product as well. So you do have SPF 50 in here. It's a tinted mineral sunscreen. This to me, I was wearing this so much over the summer. Right now, like, I want to declutter it just because I haven't reached for it in so long. And I'm like, am I going to regret it when summer comes around again? because it was beautiful, it was very lightweight, it almost gave the skin a nice like glowy look to it as well. Um, I really liked the more like serum consistency with it, 
but I don't know. I feel like I can, uh, I still feel like I can declutter this one. I feel like I can do it. Uh, so I am, and, and this one too, I feel like I could pass this along to someone and they could get some good use out of it. So that's what I'm gonna do. I hope I don't regret it when summer comes around, but I am gonna still continue to keep uh, my Ilia CB on Triple Serum SPF 40. This has vitamin C, niacinamide. Uh, this one I mentioned in a video recently. I think it was revisiting my 2022 favorites because I think I mentioned this one and I said that this is still a favorite of mine. I got the shade two and it's beautiful. It again is like your skin but better, which is a look that I very much go for. I like something that's more natural and that's more lightweight. And this is beautiful, kind of evens everything out, gives a nice glow without being too much. This is perfect for like running errands, pool days, anything like that. Um, because you do have the SPF 40 in there as well. And I, I just I think this one is great. It's expensive, but it's very beautiful. All right, then we have the L'Oreal True Match. I really do love this foundation as well. Kind of does remind me a little bit of the Pat McGrath, so it makes me feel not quite as bad that I got rid of the Pat McGrath. Because I have used this one a lot more consistently than I have the Pat McGrath. I have the shade N4, beautiful shade match. Once again, this is just super blendable. Like, I think it says it right, yeah, right? Oh, it even says super, super blendable foundation. Yes, absolutely agree. Like, but this and the Fenty are my most blendable foundations for sure. So if you're looking for a good drugstore option, the L'Oreal is gonna be one for you. Honestly, I did consider decluttering my Patrick Ta, but again, I just mentioned this in my 2022 Favorites Revisited. This is the Foundation and Finishing Powder Duo. I have the shade Light Medium One. Out of everything in that video, I did say this was the one that kind of surprised me that I was like, oh, this is the one that I put in there because I don't remember like loving it all that much. Like I remember liking it, but I'm like, really loved it? Like I almost wonder if I started trying this like towards the end of the year and just really liked it right then. You know what I mean? Like it was like, it was my current crush right then. Uh, but you have the foundation and you have the powder. I want to give this another try. I do want to do a video of um, you know, some of the older products, like you'll see a concealer coming up. Um, I have like a face duo that I want to try this Patrick Ta. So I want to do kind of like a full face of the 2022 favorites, um, especially the ones that kind of dropped off, which would be this Patrick Ta. So I'm going to keep it around for now. I'm going to try it in that video, try it a couple more times and decide if I want to keep it around or not. So this one is like kind of on the chopping block, if you will. So out of my foundations, I decluttered Four. I kept seven. Not too bad. To me, still seems like a lot when I literally just wear the Fenty, but like we got some options. All right, next we are moving over to concealers and I love concealers. Concealer is one of my favorite parts of my makeup routine and I'm, I'm very picky about my concealers, I will say. And this is too many concealers for me being picky. So we're, we're gonna need to do some work on this. So I have 10 concealers. Oh, this is, oh, oh, this is going to be hard to cut this down. Okay, so 10 concealers. Let's go. So one of my all-time favorites, I had to go grab this out of my purse. This is from NARS. This is the Soft Matte Concealer. I use the shade Creme Brulee. Clearly a favorite of mine, especially when I really struggle with acne. Because again, I typically do have more acne-prone skin. This is just so perfect for covering acne. Something about a good pot concealer, the consistency of it. This is just absolutely key. So I cannot part with my NARS. And I really like this because again, I just always keep this in my clutch. If I need a touch up or anything like that, I'm using the one from NARS. It is beautiful. Another one that I really love, this is from Sigma Beauty. This is their color corrector duo and I use the shade light to medium. I've even hit pan in it, which I am pretty proud of, but you have the lighter shade that I use for my under eyes, the darker shade that I use all over my face, which is why I hit pan in it first. But this is just such a beautiful formula. I feel like this does not get enough hype about it and it's just one of my favorites. I reach for it so often. I think this will make a really nice one to bring in my travel bag as well, just because I do get the two different options. So I'm thinking about throwing this one in my travel bag. Actually, I'm going to Scottsdale in a couple of weeks and then Ireland a couple weeks after that, and then Nashville a couple weeks after that, and then Miami a couple weeks after that. Okay, all right, so we got a lot going on, um, and I feel like the Sigma will come with me a handful of times, so I'm excited for that. I am an affiliate with Sigma. My code is Samantha. Okay, whoo-wee. 
All right, I know I'm gonna keep the one from Natasha Denona. This is the High Glam Concealer. Really like this one. It is just one of my favorite concealers right now. I am constantly raving about this one. I use the shade N4, and it's a really beautiful shade match for me. You need such a light amount of this one, and it's so blendable. That's something I'll say about this concealer. I feel like I can blend it with my fingers. Super, super blendable and beautiful. It's, it gives like, I, I swear when I put this on my under eyes, it makes me look younger. Some concealers can do that, but the one from Natasha just like takes it to like another level. I don't know what is in this one, but it's just, I like this one so much. So definitely keeping the one from Natasha. I do have an affiliate discount code with her, which is Samantha March. I asked recently your best of beauty from 2022, from 2023, excuse me. And I saw a lot of people mention that concealer and I was like, I am not surprised. Okay, I think I'm going to declutter this one from It Cosmetics. I really like this one, but it's one of those of like, there's just concealers that I like more. And again, I don't feel like I have to keep everything. I actually really like this one, especially when I was really struggling with acne. Um, this makes for, it, it says Bye Bye Dark Spots Concealer and Serum. It's great for the under eyes, but I also thought it was really nice to spot conceal on the face as well. And it does come with a little brush, which I thought really came in handy. So I like this one. It's just going to be that thing again of I have others that I like even more. So I can pass this one on. Okay, uh, so my one from Charlotte Tilbury, this is the one that I am going to put in my get ready with me with the 2022 favorites because her Radiant Concealer and I have the shade Medium 5. This is one that I mentioned that I don't use as much because of the Natasha Denona, because of the LYS that I love so much. So I just started trying the Tower 28 and I really like it. So again, great concealer, one that I recommend. It makes the under eyes look brighter without being like super glowy. Um, it's nice and lightweight. There's just others that I like a little bit more, but I am gonna keep this one so I can, it's kind of on the chopping block as well. So we'll see how I feel after I use it. Uh, I mentioned the one from LYS. I talk about this concealer all of the time. This is their Triple Fix Brightening Concealer. This is in my Project Use Up and I am like scraping at the sides of this one when I do use it because it is about gone, which I'm super proud of, but this is a beautiful concealer. One of my, like just one of my tippy top favorites. Highly, highly recommend this one. It is, it's like undetectable when you wear it. It just makes your under eyes look better. I can use this to spot conceal as well. It's easy to blend out. It's just a great concealer. Uh, I am gonna declutter the one from Ofra. This is their Perfect Cover Concealer and I have the shade Light Sand. This is a nice concealer, especially if you're looking for something that is going to be a little bit more full coverage. I'm someone who does lean a little bit more lighter coverage, but I know there are a lot of people that prefer more of a full coverage for the under eyes. This is going to be a good option for you. But again, with how many concealers I have in my collection and especially how many I use on a really regular basis, I am going to declutter the one from Ofra. One of the newest ones that I mentioned that I like so much is from Tower 28. I've used this one in my last a few Get Ready With Me's. I use the shade IE. This one feels more of like that serum consistency as well. It's very easy to blend out. It makes the under eyes and the skin like look more hydrated. This is a concealer that I like to use. If I'm not gonna be wearing foundation, I'll just come in and put this concealer on my under eyes, like the center of my face, things like that, and then just blend it all out. And it just gives such a beautiful look. Like I don't feel like I need to go in with a liquid foundation when I use this one. So I've been really loving this one from Tower 28. So I do wanna hold on to that one. All right, okay. So from House Labs, I just purchased this in the Sephora sale. I don't want to get rid of it just because it is so much newer to me. Um, I got the shade Light Medium Peach. This is one of those that, again, I think is good. I think a lot of people would like this concealer. I saw this concealer mentioned a lot in the 2023 Best of Beauty, so I know a lot of you are really enjoying it. But the LYS, the Natasha, and the Tower 28, like that's what I feel like I need in my collection right now. I don't feel like I need even... 10 concealers or more, you know, I, that's why I've been wanting to cut it down. Still a good one if you're looking to try House Labs. There's not been a lot from the brand that I've been like overly impressed with, but I do think that this is a nice concealer. So, you know, one that you could try out. So I'm, I'm gonna keep it for right now, but I have a feeling I'll be decluttering it. And then I'm looking at the Lancome. I'm looking at the Tenti Dole Ultra Wear. Whew, I have the shade Buff Neutral. This has been a favorite of mine for a long time. I've talked about this concealer 
a whole lot. This is beautiful for the under eyes. This is beautiful to spot conceal. This is beautiful to wear in place of foundation. But I won't lie, it has been a minute since I have pulled this out. This used to be like just honestly one of my top one to two concealers that I would wear. But I feel as though... I can say goodbye to it. And I've used a lot of it. I've gotten great use out of this. Again, I mean, I used to travel with this everywhere. It is a beautiful concealer, a little bit more, it's not full coverage, but it has a little bit more coverage than the Natasha and the Tower 28. It is really hard for me to do, but I'm just, if I can't think of the last time that I used this, I, I just, I really feel like I can declutter it. I really do feel like I can. Oh, it's a toughie, but I'm gonna do it because these concealers, like these are what I use the most. The LYS, the Natasha, the Tower 28 right now, the most used. The NARS, always in my purse. The Sigma Beauty, such a great option. The only, the Charlotte Tilbury and the House Labs, those are the two that are kind of like the outliers in this group, but I think keeping what, three, six, seven? Yeah, keeping seven concealers and decluttering three, like I think that that's pretty good. Still a lot of concealers, but I'm, I'm happy with this. So after that, that is going to be my first collection video for Vlogmas. I have in the basket is what I'm keeping and over here is what I decluttered. So I feel pretty good about this. I mean, I feel like I'm keeping products that I really love, that I really use. A couple things that are on the chopping block, but I swear with each collection or declutter video, it just gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and I'm happy with that. And it's, this is what brings me joy right now is having a smaller collection. And so even if you're someone who gets joy from a bigger collection, I hope that we can all understand that everyone gets joy in different ways. So I hope you enjoyed the first collection and declutter video of 2023 and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.